Hello everyone and welcome to our anticipated release video of May 2018. I almost said April, but this is May of 2018. My name is Mike. I'm Nick. And I'm Travis. Yeah, and so this month has a couple cool games. Now before we get started, uh, I want to make one correction from last month. Uh, when we made the video, Pillars of Eternity 2 was going to come out in April, but it got delayed. Uh, yeah. So all of the recommendation stuff I said last month, I still hold true to it, but I just wanted to you know, make you guys aware that it's actually coming out this month. Um, but other yeah. than that, you know, we did the typical. We all brought two games. Uh, and so who wants to go first? You know what? I'd like to, I'd like to start us off today because I'm going to go with a game that is very interesting for a lot of people. Ah, I'll just skip the kind of introduction. I'm going to be talking about Shin Megami <laughs> Tensei Strange Journey Redux. And one of the things that I kind of saw, and I didn't know this was an issue, and it kind of makes sense that I, after you know doing a little bit of reasoning in my head, because they're both Atlas-made games, um, it seems very focused that they really want to separate Shin Megami Tensei and Persona. And... Mm -hmm. I don't know a ton about the Shin Megami Tensei series, and I know that it has more of a darker and kind of deeper kind of aspect in that way, and I'm not a huge, I don't know a ton about the Persona uh, series as well, but it seems like they kind of bridged, or people thought they got a little kind of blurred lines for a little bit, and it's very clear that at least the people who really like Shin Megami Tensei don't want that to happen. But uh, this the new this uh, Strange Journey Redux actually looks really fun. I checked out a couple trailers, I did a little bit of research, and most of the stuff that I saw was kind of in their dungeon, and it kind of gave like an old classic feel back to the old, like the Doom series, where like it seems like you're kind of crawling through a dungeon in that way. And so, um, I know they're both Atlas-made games, but I will kind of look to see if the reception is the same in this way, because I know that especially when you have similar IPs, that it seems like they really want Atlas to keep these separate but it might be kind of hard because it seems like they kind of want to blend of the two as well. I hope you kind of see what I'm getting at because mm -hmm. it, it looks like an interesting way that Atlas is going to try to play this because it will depend on some of their future games. Is this yeah. kind of like a situation where it's uh, Paper Mario versus Mario and Luigi where they were like two very similar IPs and they're trying to like find that distinguishing factor I think... between the two games and then we just hope that it plays out better than, than what Mario happened? I think it's more the fact that I kind of I kind of see what you're saying, Travis. And originally I thought that, but I think it's more the fact that they're both very uh, RPG based, and I know they kind of both had that had that one. But I think the difference comes mainly in the in like their storytelling and what kind of focuses they have as like the central aspect of what they design the game around. Okay. So I think it's more of a darker, more of a kind of I don't want to say demented, but kind of it has a very darker aspect when it comes to the Shin Megami Tensei series. And, again, I don't know Persona as much, but it seems like Persona contrasts that in a different way. And I know that mm -hmm. they touch on they touch on important themes, but not in, like, that darker sense, I guess. Uh, Mike, yeah. you played Persona 5. What do you think? No, yeah, like, what you're saying is true. Um, I will say, as far as story goes, you're right. Like, Shin Megami Tensei is usually more serious and darker. I will say this game, though, like, as far as the gameplay goes... Or like the style of it, it is very similar to Persona in terms of like the negotiating in the combat, which I think is like the coolest thing ever. Where like you face a demon and you can like negotiate with it to get it on your side. Um, I think that stuff's really cool. It also has the fusing where like the demons you capture, you can fuse them and make stronger ones. So all of that is related to Persona. But yeah, like you said, it's pretty much just the story. Like the premise of this game pretty much is like you're someone that's in the military trying to stop demons coming from a black hole in the in the south pole Damn. and so yeah. it's a lot it's a lot more like dark and serious than persona story was which was we're just a band of heroes that want to stop bad guys you know yeah um i will say to what you were saying nick this is a port of like an original game and yeah. the game that came out for the ds actually got really really good ratings so i haven't played it and i'm probably gonna buy this because of those good ratings so like you said i'm hoping that this one gets good ratings because usually ports don't do a horrible job and atlas i know is really good as far as like porting yeah. their games so I'm hoping they do good with this one, but we'll see. Yeah, no, I'm really, I'm really excited for it as well. I mean, <clears throat> I think, I think, yeah, I think for, uh, for based on Travis's point, the main distinction is like what kind of story they're telling. And again, it it, it does have kind of, kind of a more darker aspect to it, and it kind of seems that it attracts a different audience than, than the whole Persona series. I, I think it's yeah. cool that they're blending certain good, like certain aspects of, of the kind of gameplay, but like, more, the gameplay is still staying, at least from what I've seen for a lot of the Shin Megami Tensei series games it's still staying to that gameplay but it's bridging it's taking in other aspects which is why like the lines kind of got blurred i think so that yeah. kind of that's kind of what i'm saying but anyway mm -hmm. who wants to go next 
Uh, I'll do mine because I have one that, you know, I don't have a lot to say, so I'll keep it short. And that's Conan Exiles. Uh, this game came out last year uh, as far as like its alpha release and stuff, and it did not get the best ratings. Uh, it got a 6 out of 10 on Steam, and I think a lot of people complained just because it felt like it was poorly put together. Granted, it was an alpha, but it still felt like it was kind of a half-assed performance of what they were putting out. Um, it plays like a lot of games that have come out, and they're sort of a theme, a trend of open-world survival games like Ark. Um, I'm, I'm blanking on a few, but Ark is the one that usually comes to people's minds. Metal uh, Gear Survive, her, her, her. That one kind of follows in that trend um, also. Seven Days um, to Die. That's Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of games coming out like that, and I think Conan Exiles was just trying to capitalize on that. Um, so it, it's it's hard to tell. Uh, from what I've heard, the past couple months, they've put a lot of like effort into overhauling the combat system and the gathering system to make it a lot better uh, for like its actual release. So I, I don't know for sure whether like when it comes out, it's going to be worth getting or not. Right now, I would say no. But if like the changes they're making to it end up being worth it, I think it'd be good. I mean, because there's some positive things like you have to like hunt to like you know make sure you don't get hungry or thirsty you can meet other players uh but it also has a good single player experience also Wait, so you don't you have to you do multiplayer eat other players that sounds uh, awesome you i i don't think i said that i wish that was the case so what we're saying is that me and travis can play this game online with the multiplayer that it has and it's going to be pristine and we can just have eating competitions against each other i didn't promise that the streamers that are also <laughs> playing in our game guys <laughs> you're getting their hopes up and this is not going to happen <laughs> Um, I don't I'm know. sorry. <laughs> That's all I, I wanted I'm to say. I'm sorry that I misheard you. I don't know what you possibly said that I could have. I guess. I think I just jumped. I think I just no, jumped I from think, one point I, to the I, next. I, I think you did a good job explaining it, Mike. No, that's kind of an interesting trend that th that they see. But when they said that it wasn't well put together, I was talking about like graphical glitches or something like that, or like broken that gameplay. Too, I think it's more just like there's nothing to do in it, you know? Like, you run around oh, and do stuff, okay. but that's really it. But yeah, the, <laughs> even the graphics in it, you know, it looks like a PS2 game at times to me. But again, I think that's something they're fixing. So all those little things that people are complaining about, they're claiming to be fixing, uh, but we'll see when it comes out. Interesting, interesting. So, Travis, mm -hmm. what uh, what games do you have over there for okay. us? Okay, well, um, the first game I'll talk about uh, will be... Why am I blanking? State of Decay 2. So, nice. um, when I was looking at all of the lovely games that are coming out this month, I recognized a lot of different things like Donkey Kong Country, um, which Little we should mention, Hyrule Warriors, but later. and Dark Souls Remastered, where it's like, <laughs> I don't know if I want to talk about them because they've already been out on other things. But we'll you know, I'll give honorable we'll mention to them later. because they are good ports. Right. Um, <laughs> anyway, so when I was watching the. Uh, trailer for State of Decay 2, I'm like, oh, okay, so it's just another typical zombie uh, game. I've, I've seen a lot of these. And then, all of a sudden, this big, giant zombie came out of nowhere and ripped the one player's person in half. And then <laughs> this other girl just had to, like, murder him. And I'm like, oh! I cool. like this, because I always like it when zombie games have more than just the stereotypical zombie, and, like, that is the zombie this will be the enemy the entire time. Because, mm -hmm. like, uh, like I was saying before we actually started talking about this, was the reasons why I like Left 4 Dead and then, uh, like, The Last of Us is because there are different types of zombies, so it keeps it interesting or different versus something like Dead Rising, where, don't get me wrong, I love playing that game, but it gets stale for me quicker because yeah. there's just... Like, okay, I'm just going to be using this weapon. I'll kill a horde of the same type of zombies and get to the next destination. So when I saw that, I'm like, oh, that is actually interesting. So I'll see. I don't know what the uh, first one was like, but we'll see. It looked cool. I think you broke Nick. <laughs> <laughs> no, as you were what? doing that, Pat, wa Pat walked in. He just like was going into like freaking Metal Gear Solid stealth mode, but he switched to cartoon mode like halfway through. Started started taking like overly dramatic steps. It was hysterical. I hear ya. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I, I heard the Pat. chuckling, and I'm like, did I say something? Pat says hi. <laughs> did I say I was eating humans too or something? I don't know. I know. Know. I was trying to think. What did Travis do now? <laughs> I don't know. No, Maybe sorry. It was it. just it was just Pat that broke me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hear ya. I I understand. Um, so, so Pat's gonna have a face for this video, right, Mike? I guess so. He didn't maybe say for, anything. Maybe for like um, a second. He, he said, said everything. He said hi. Oh. 
But anyway, True. no, that that sounds really cool, Travis. When you told when you told me about like the like the ripping off of the head, I was like, damn, yeah, yeah. that sounds cool. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> up until that point, I'm like, eh, maybe I'll talk about this one. And then that happened. I'm like, damn, never mind. That's hilarious. That was cool. It's like this needs a mention at this point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So is it up to me again? I yes, guess sir. So. All right. Coming out with my more anticipated release here, and that's going to be the Mega Man Legacy Collection. And for those of you who don't know, it already had a digital release on PS4 around August, and Xbox One and Steam. It actually also had a 3DS release too, but now it's finally coming to Switch this May for 2018. So, it's gonna be really cool. It actually has high-def 8-bit graphics, which, you know, that's kind of weird to me. But <laughs> it's going to, but the games that are included are Mega Man's, like the original Mega Man, all the way to Mega Man 6. And the reason I feel like this is such a cool thing for them to do is because where did Mega Man get his start? On the Nintendo consoles, at least I think it did. I was gonna say the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mega Man got a start for the Switch, but especially with, uh, cause you saw a lot of people wanting like the callbacks, like the old school Mega Man games. Like the original Mega Man games were so good. Like the Mega Man X games were fun too. I was, I've been playing a Mega Man X on the uh, SNES Classic 2 for a while. Such fun games. And going back to that kind of style of games too, especially when they're remaking some, I think they're making like Mega Man, not Mega Man 9, they're making a new Mega Man, uh, I can't remember what, that's that's kind of like a nod back to those old school kind of gameplay, and this is kind of a good way to basically introduce Mega Man into, I guess, a younger audience too. And even mm -hmm. though that it's it's not new to the Mega Man series for us, because we all know the Mega Man games, we all know how of a, how big of like a game Dynasty was, it was back in the day, I would say arguing like it was, this, I think it was like the Call of Duty of that time, but... It's awesome to see on the Switch because a lot of these games that are going, a lot of the games that are coming to the Switch and are like kind of, at least this is one of the ways that you can get kind of like that retro feel back on the Switch, I guess is a better right. way to say it, which I love and I wish that they would do a lot of stuff too. I mean, I know we haven't talked about like D-Makes a lot on this channel, but I love D-Makes. So I would love to see like some of these games or at least maybe game, I know this is more of a port. But like, if they could make a game like a new, like a new school Mega Man game, but also feature like a D make of like powering it, powering like down the graphics into that kind of like a uh, eight bit kind of style, I think that would be super, super cool. So like, basically a Mega Man Sonic Mania. Mega that's Man the Mania. Dream Man. Triple M. That's the that's <laughs> the dream man. They actually did. They actually had a fan made a uh, fan made a game called like Mega Man Level Maker or something like that around like the same time as Super Mario Maker. I was uh -huh. like, that's a cool idea. I don't think it was like a licensed Capcom game, but it was a like a fan made game. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Yes, it was like it was kind of like the AM2R uh, kind of game too. So mm -hmm. I think that I think it's a really cool thing that the Mega Man Legacy Collection is coming to the Switch, where I feel like the audience will be more receptive to the fact that it's going there. So right. I am very excited for it. Yeah, it will be really cool. Uh, and it's a lot of games. It's like what Mega Man one through nine, I think. One through six. So one through six, but still, that's a lot of Mega Man games. So yes, 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 it yeah. is. I definitely think that's worth picking up for sure. Yeah, at least that's what that's what this uh, that's what the page that I'm on says. It says one through six. Okay, I just didn't know if it was like collection one and two, if it was just the first. But yeah, now we know. So the Legacy okay. Collection for Mega the Le Legacy Collection two features Mega Man seven through ten. Okay, got it. So yeah, fun okay. facts for you. Yep, we're learning today. <laughs> learning all the time. All right, Mike, you got um, a second one for us? Yes. So this one I am so excited for, uh, and this one is called Detroit Become Human. Uh, for those of you that haven't heard of the company Quantic Dream, they have made so many of my favorite uh, like interactive drama story games. Uh, they made Heavy Rain, they made Beyond Two Souls, they made a game called Fahrenheit, which was also really good. So they've made a ton of these fun like drama story games where like you have to make these difficult choices. It's less about you know action and combat, and it's more about like getting immersed into a beautiful story. Uh, and Detroit Become Human is something they've been working on for a long time, and it looks incredibly good. Uh, the game centers on this android named Kara, who essentially is just trying to, you know, adjust to living among humans. She escapes the facility she was born in, and and she has to like try to, you know, immerse herself in a group of humans, you know, in sort of a strange society. And the fun thing about these games, you know, and again, I don't want to talk too much about the story. There's not really a lot of details out about it. Uh, but the main thing I want to mention, it's kind of like Until Dawn. Uh, where you have a set of main characters that you're going to switch between and if they die, there's no game over. You just keep playing on and the choices you make will determine whether or not they live or whether or not they die. Ooh, and I so at the that. end of the... Yeah, it's super cool. <laughs> That's pretty so at awesome. the end of the... Yeah, at the end of the game, they could all be dead or they could all be living. It totally depends on how you play the game. 
And that's so cool. And I think there's a lot of games that say, oh, you know, you can make choices, but there's not really choices. Like the Telltale games, as much as I love them, your choices don't really matter. They don't change the outcome that much. Yeah. But in Quantic Dream games, they do. Like Heavy Rain, it drastically changes it. I can't spoil the ending of Heavy Rain because your son can die or he can live. It depends on how you play the game. So there's no like ending. It has all the possible endings. Um, and I think that's what Detroit Become Human is going to be like. At least I really, really hope. So we'll see. But again, this is the game I'm absolutely going to buy. If anyone out there is a fan of interactive drama story games like the Telltale games, like Beyond Two Souls, I would absolutely recommend it. Cool, cool, cool. Yep. <laughs> Sweet. Does that leave you. me as the it last does. one? Right? Okay, <laughs> yep. so the other game I'll talk about is Everspace. Uh, when I popped up this trailer, I'm literally like, wow, this is HD Firefox. And I love it. Because <laughs> at first it was just like they were kind of flying in space and nothing was happening like at all. I'm like, oh, this is kind of lame. And then, you know, actual shooting stuff happened. I'm like, okay. So this is basically a realistic looking Firefox without a stupid mechanic to turn into, you know, trying to use the Wii pad for nothing for mm -hmm. good. So that looked interesting. It was on the PS4, I believe, PS4 exclusive. But um, it, it was very pretty. And I mean, if you like flying around in spaceships and explosions, those are in it. Travis? Yes? What's Firefox? That, that's a browser. <laughs> are you thinking of Star Fox? No, 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 no. It was clearly he said Firefox. the video game okay. Firefox. It's when beautiful. you said it's like an HD Firefox, am I like, is it like an HD web browser? Oh, man. That'd be so cool. Make a game that's a web browser. No, that shows that's like you switching how... everything around. No, that's my school corrupting <laughs> me. And that's making hilarious. And me use Firefox for homework. And, and me <laughs> not having the time because of school to play Star Fox. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, um, well, if you're talking note, about Star Fox Zero, you save yourself some time. Star Fox instead of Firefox, even though he does have fire, so technically he is a Firefox. That is, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Bam. You do bring home a good point there, Travis. Mm -hmm. He's not a star. <laughs> uh, he's not valid. a big ball of gas that explodes and kills universes. That's true. Yeah, he is Travis? more fire than star. Travis knows the most about space out of anybody in this group. <laughs> Amen to that. It's no, that's awesome. Yeah, so one other thing I really want to mention before we go. Uh, I know we were kind of talking about it before. Mm -hmm. Since we're a Nintendo yeah. channel, I feel like we should mention the Switch releases. Mm -hmm. uh, it's oh, we all... Should... What were you going to say? I was going to say, I was gonna, at least I was going to kind of do something similar. To at least mention Donkey Kong, Hyrule Warriors, and the Dark Souls that are coming out. Mm -hmm. At least to mention those, because those are going to be some big releases for the Switch. And Little uh, Nightmares. Yeah, that's, that is exactly what I was going to say, guys. Yeah. So, Take away, Mike. Because <laughs> I, I was going to say stream, and that was a uh, cool the, game, and I want to play it now. It It is awesome, and I'm, I'm probably going to get for the Switch AI. again, too. <laughs> True that. Um... But yeah, like you guys said, Hyrule Warriors is coming out again, the Definitive Edition. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze is coming out. Dark Souls Remastered is coming out for all the systems. So the Switch is not getting any original games, but it's getting a lot of games that are still fun to play. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I think there's always that debate. Do we like the ports or do we want them to just focus on original games? I don't know. Uh, but some of them like Dark Souls and Little Nightmares are super awesome to see because those have never been on a Nintendo console. Mm -hmm. So yeah. those are really cool. And same with the Mega Man Legacy Collection uh, is another port that's coming to the Switch. So... There's a lot of them, and I think it's going to be super cool. We mentioned Pillars of Eternity 2 at the beginning. It's not coming out for Switch this month, but it will be later on. So, you know, again, yeah. the port stuff is really cool to see too. So. Yeah, I think I think for me, if, it, if we're just going to talk about ports, I think it's really important uh, if it's like a console where a lot of people pass on the opportunity because the console didn't sell very well, like the Wii U. I think ports are not are, are a good idea if it doesn't take a lot of time out of it. And yeah. if they offer like a little bit new, because like honestly, I would almost consider Mario Kart 8 Deluxe a port. Or it, I know it like it, it's it a little a like kind of different. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, but I mean like in, in that way, if you didn't have that opportunity to play Mario Kart, you're basically you're almost playing the same game with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for the Switch. And in that right. case, I think it's really it's a good idea if it doesn't mm -hmm. take a lot of time to kind of transfer it over. If it does take a lot of time, no, that you can keep it on the console. Give us something new. 
Ports for the Switch, I'm totally okay with too, because the Switch has the added benefit of being on the go. So yeah. like Dark Souls, this is just a port, but it's a port where now you can play Dark Souls on the plane or in a car ride. So Hell I like yeah. Switch ports for that exact reason. I don't think it would be um, legally allowed for me to do that kind of activity. Could you imagine the amount of people <laughs> I would accidentally murder by throwing my Switch at someone's face on an airplane? I would love to hear Travis raging at the back of the airplane <laughs> playing Dark Travis? Souls. I'm a freaking bitch! I hate this! <laughs> <laughs> Um, Dude, sir, can you awesome. not use that? My four-year-old is here, okay? We're looking forward to going to <laughs> Disney World. Shut up, bitch! <laughs> Travis, no. Travis with 2K on a plane, that's more dangerous than a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I Very just true. explode. Oh my god, he did have a bomb. And as Mike, please, before we say something stupider. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was May. Uh, if there's any other games, which there probably isn't, that you are excited for, let us know in the comments. Uh, wait, 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 uh, wait, Mike, there's a better way of saying this. <clears throat> oh, no. May there be a better game. Let us know. Oh my god. Ending it on that. Later, that's the best ending. Bye. I'm done here. <laughs> Bye.